Hey, hello friends and welcome to this new video on Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be discussing about some handy tips for Flutter developers. Well, these are going to be some handy tips that every Flutter developer is going to need at some point in their Flutter development career. So uh, this is just going to be a short video and there are going to be some quick tutorials in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to learn in this video is to lock the orientation of your Flutter app UI to a certain orientation. For example, let's say I have this login screen in my application here and uh, I have designed this uh, login screen to work well in portrait mode and I don't want the app to shift in landscape mode when the device is tilted. So let's say I rotate this device and the app rotates itself and you can see this yellow bar here and I don't want this to happen. So let's go back to the previous orientation and what we want in this case is to lock the orientation. So for that we're going to be using a system Chrome class. So this class is provided to you by service package in Flutter and we're going to use this class to restrict the orientation. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to import the service package. Import package flutter service dart services dot dart and then we're going to come down to this build function of my app so here we're going to use this uh, system chrome class and its static function that is set preferred orientations so this function is going to take a list of device orientations uh, that is a specific class so we're going to pass a list of device orientations let me put a semicolon here and let me just put in device orientation dot portrait up and portrait down device orientation dot portrait down so by adding these orientations to the flutter application our application is now restricted to these two orientations only so if I hot reload the app again and come back to the emulator and I rotate the app so you can see that the app is not shifting down to the landscape mode and it's stuck in the portrait mode only. So this is quite a handy tip because sometimes you design the layout interface to uh, work in a particular orientation and it's it's not designed for the other orientations. So this is quite a handy tip for those cases. Okay, so now that we have locked the orientation of the app, so let's move to the second part of the tutorial, that is to change the status bar color of the application. So in most applications, you design the UI and you have a certain color palette in mind for the application. So in such cases, you have to sometimes change the status bar color according to your own choice. So in such cases, we're also going to use the System Chrome class. So we're going to be using a function of this System Chrome class again. So we're going to be using System Chrome dot set System UI Overlay Style. So what we're going to pass to this is a new instance of System UI Overlay Style. That is quite a mouthful, and we're going to pass a new instance of this. And in this, there are going to be a few properties. So we're going to look at the status bar color. So the status bar color is going to be the color of our choice. So let me just pass colors dot um, deep orange. That is here. And let's say we save this and run it again. And you can see that the status bar has changed its color to deep orange. So there is one question. So let's say I change the color of this status bar to white. And so let's see what happens to the icons then. Let me change the color to white here. And when I run the app again, you can see that the icons don't, uh, icons are not visible. So in such cases, what should we do? So basically there is an other property here that is status bar icon brightness. So it's not uh, a really, uh, named quite well. I don't know if it is, but it, it does not reflect the usage uh, of itself. So we're going to use status bar icon brightness. So in this, we're going to use brightness dot dark because we want the icons to appear dark. And when I run the app again, you can see that the icons are visible in that particular color. Uh, let's say the if, if you set the color of the status bar to uh, a light one so you want the dark icons and if you set the color to a dark one you want the light icons so this is how you can change the status bar color and along with this if you also want to change the color of the navigation bar then you can add other properties like this you can add navigation uh, bar color and in this you can pass colors dot deep orange and run the app again and you can see that the navigation bar color has also changed and 
Also, there is the uh, icon brightness also for the navigation bar. So you can pass a system navigation bar icon brightness and brightness dot light. And when I run the app, uh, you can see that there is at all no change because it was already light. And when I, if I change that to dark and run the app, so you can see that the buttons are changed, navigation buttons are changed to a dark color. So this is how the system Chrome class is useful in managing the uh, status bar and the navigation bar using the set system UI overlay style, which takes an instance of system UI overlay style class with these particular properties. Okay, so for explaining this next part, I have just made a few changes to this login screen. I have added two more fields that are not quite relevant to login, but uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So the problem that we're gonna face in this simple layout is that when I click on this input field, you can see that there is a yellow bar here. And when I click on this full name field, there's also this yellow bar. So basically, uh, what Flutter is telling us is that it does not have enough space to display all the elements in the screen when the keyboard is on the screen. So there are two ways to solve this problem. And the one is by adding a simple property to the scaffold that is resize to a wide bottom insets. Not the padding one, this is deprecated. Use, you can use the resize to a wide bottom insets. And if you set that to false, that is you don't want to resize. And when you run the app again, you can see that uh, there is not at all any shifting in the UI when the keyboard is brought to screen. So this can work for applications, but uh, it does not do any favor for the UI designer because it looks dull in uh, um, UI language and it does not really attract the user and does not show where the focus of the user should be. So I d usually avoid this method. So let's delete it from here right now. And let's come down here to the container that is containing every field. So basically I have this container that is containing this column containing all the fields. So what I will do is I'll just add a single child scroll view as a parent of this container. So first thing that I need to do is add some height to the container so that it has some specific height because the single child scroll view does not have a height of its own. It's going to take a height of its child. So let me add some height to this uh, container. And let me just add a height of media query dot off context dot size dot height. So it's going to take the height of the screen itself. So what we need to do now is add a parent to this container that is single child scroll view. And when I run the app again and go to the emulator, you can see when I click on this full name, this field is shifted that the layout scrolled itself and the focused field is above the keyboard. And this is the accurate behavior that you want your app to have when a person opens the keyboard. So you can also add that resize bottom insets and all that, but that is a dull move and I don't want you to follow that. I want you to add a single child scroll view uh, to the container that contains your layout and that will do, do the job. Okay, so the fourth tip is just going to be just a quick one to help you remove this uh, ugly debug ribbon on the top right hand corner of your applications. So this is not given to you by a scaffold or anything. This is given to you by the material app widget. So uh, in this case of material app, uh, we're gonna go to this material app and add a simple property that is debug show checked mode banner. And when you set it to false and rerun the application, uh, you can see that the debug uh, ribbon is gone and your application is free of that ugly thing. And you can just give your app to your clients for testing and all that, so all that good stuff. Okay, so I hope you like these quick tutorials and uh, I hope they will help you in your Flutter development. And this is the first video of 2020 and I wish you all a very happy new year. And if you like the tutorial, please hit the like button and the subscribe button for more Flutter co uh, content coming your way. So see you next time. Peace.